<laughs> Hello YouTube and welcome to my channel. If you've seen some of my stuff before then welcome back to my channel. This will be a review video where it's kind of a show and tell. Um, today I have the Rugged Ridge XHD Recovery Gear Kit. I received this as a gift from my wife for Christmas and this is something that I've been been meaning to get for a while now. As you can see, it comes with a nice little bag um, to carry everything with. Um, of course, the um, brand badge on the side. Oh, which it zips around. Now, this is kind of like the old school, like I'm um, a uh, um, uh, carpet bag or old school, like hand. I'm um, a uh, doctor's bag where it kind of folds over but when you open it up it actually opens up all the ways I'm gonna, and it's nice and open so it's easy to get to everything I'll be going through what all comes with it I'm gonna, so first off you have a set of the Rugged Ridge gloves which I wear a size large in gloves so oftentimes when gloves come with something um, they don't don't fit me very well they usually the gloves that come with most things are like mediums and they're usually small but these are actually rather nice um, uh, gloves that come with it they are leather they're rather soft I'm not sure what um, what kind of leather they are I mean, they're not super thick, but you know they're de they would definitely I mean, protect your hands. So it does come with a pair of gloves, and like I said, I do believe that these would be about a size large. They fit, you know, they fit me pretty well, and I know that's what I, I mean, what I need. It comes with two bow shackles or D rings. These are rated at 9,500 pounds, so it, it comes with two of them with your um, uh, pins. So that brings me to a total of six, so I should have plenty, plenty enough for recovery. It comes with the snatch block or pulley block. Um, it does give you on it um, um, line diameter and weight rating capacities but it you do get a um, you do get the pulley block with it um let me check right quick I got it pulled up on my phone for a quick reference um, it says snatch pulley block is rated at 20,000 pounds and that's from the extreme terrain website in the product description then with that you get a tree saver which I mean, of course you know everything's everything's got the I mean, badge to it but as you can see I mean, this is a proper tree saver where it's a really wide it's got nice I mean, nice loops I mean, made into the ends of it and it says never exceed 30,000 pounds so let me reference back to the website again uh, yeah tree trunk protect pr tree trunk protector strap so your tree trunk protector this would be rated at 30,000 and I will drop that in the floor and then you also have like a, a tow rope or I'm going to see what they call it on this side. Uh, yeah, they're calling this recovery strap. So I'm gonna, I don't think that this is a kinetic. Never see. It's rated at 20,000 pounds. So... I don't know if this is a kinetic strap or not. I'll have to do a little more research 
and see I don't believe it is mm. I'll cut back in at the end of the video with what I find on it but mm, if nothing else you know you can use this for mm, towing a, mm, a busted vehicle out or as a mm, winch line extension mm, if you're you know neat if you don't have enough enough line on your drums anyways so yeah I'll have to check in that I'm not sure if it's a kinetic or not and then of course you get a recover recovery blanket so of course everything badged as rugged ridge the back of it you have these two pockets one on each side to put weight in this says minimum of five pounds and basically your standard Velc velcro closures so you would weight weight that down and then you would put your recovery blanket over your line so and then as you can see the that there and it all stores in here pretty pretty well mm -hmm. so let me reset my shot now that I've shown what it comes with and mm -hmm. I will be back in a minute with some more information Okay, folks, so after I'm uh, reading on the website a little bit, it says recovery strap is your, um, and it's a, I think it's a 30 foot recovery strap. So you could use that for, like I mentioned, a winch line extension, or, you know, you could use it vehicle to vehicle, or tow your buddy out, or um, you could daisy chain through, I um, uh, through rough obstacles or you know things like that you just don't want to do the um, uh, shock high shock load snatch recoveries with it because it is a um, uh, I think it's a nylon strap is it will not stretch very much you know anything will stretch you put enough force on it but um, it's not designed for the snatch recoveries so you know you don't want to you know try to take a run and go and jerk your buddy out of the mud hole with it. I mean, not advisable. But let's talk for a few minutes on why you would want something like this. Now, you can piece together a recovery kit or you could buy one I mean, all together like this. I mean, if you piece it together or I mean, just buy the kit, I mean, there's some pros and cons to both. It will usually come out about the same price. Mm -hmm. Let me grab my phone real fast. Oh. Get the camera focus back. So, mm -hmm. the price on this would be about $130 on Extreme Terrain's website, which is where this one is from. If you was to buy all the components individually and assemble them, you know, you would probably have about that much in it. So, you know, it's you know it's basically you know for what you it's either you know pay you know a little bit up front get it all together with the bag to carry everything in or you could kind of piece a kit together I mean, but you know and it'll cost you about the same in the long run anyways now the nice thing about getting a kit that's all together is you know one you've got basically most of most of everything that you need for most of your recoveries for most recovery situations but with the kit you can always add to it I have another mm, 30 foot toe strap that I had bought mm, about the time that I got the winch for the Jeep that I carry that I'll be adding to this recovery kit mm, to go along so I'll have two 30 foot toe straps with my for recovery and basically it just gives you you know you can add things 
if you see that, you know, well, you know, I've, like I mentioned, I, ha I now have six D-rings. I may go, well, I don't need six. You know, why would I carry, carry the extra weight of, you know, two more in there when I've already got four attached to the Jeep? I mean, so, you know, you can kind of add and take, take away depending on what, what you actually use. Another thing that, I mean, and if you go on the forums and read it, it's kind of a controversial thing. Most of your older folks will say, well, yeah, you know, I always carry a chain. You know, a lot of the newer generations like, no, chains are a big no-no, they're dangerous. It depends on how you use it. Mm -hmm. And chains do have their place and their applications. But it's when you take and try to use a chain in an application that you, that you really shouldn't, like a snatch recovery, that chains are so dangerous. But, mm -hmm. You know, but there's a lot of things you can do with a chain that, you know, a nylon strap just isn't physically the material it's made out of. Not that it doesn't have the, you know, the I mean, strength, but I mean, to withstand the pull force. But you end up either cutting or abrading your strap where you're not going to hurt the chain. I mean, you know, so there are situations when a chain may be preferable over a nylon strap or I mean, and the nice thing about a chain is you could always I mean, if you've got got one with hooks you can always wrap it like say if you but it doesn't have a recovery point you can wrap it around the frame and hook the chain to itself I mean, chains are you know there's a reason tow trucks still carry chains you know there are applications for them it's just using them correctly so I do plan on I'm a, getting a, I'm a not, and you know the thing is, you want to get good gear, but it doesn't have to be the most expensive gear. But a, that's the thing is that you know you want to try to think ahead. You know, well, what if I'm in this situation? What if I'm in that situation? Because the whole point of carrying recovery gear with you is not, um, uh, well, I know I'm going to need it. It's, well, I might need it. You know, you could save yourself a lot of time and hassle and save yourself some space to pack other things. If you go, well, I don't need it for this trip. I know I'll get stuck on next trip. Well, when you do need it, you need it badly. So that's the whole idea of putting the winch on your vehicle, carrying the recovery kit, yeah, you can make do without, but it makes things easier to have the correct bit of gear. And also, it will make things safer. Now, one thing I want to talk about is your pulley block. Now, this is something that you may not necessarily need, but it is good to have. Because a pulley block, you can, I mean, if you just have one, which the kit comes with, you can, if you're bad bogged, I'm a, in a mud hole or something, or you're trying to, you know, trying to come up, you know, a little rock space, and you need that, and you just don't have the grip. You know, you can do a double line pull, and pull which will have the working load on the I'm a, on the winch. If you have a light vehicle and a stout winch, single line pull may be all you ever actually need. But say you have a heavier vehicle, or you've, you know. You bought, as you can, I mean, say so you managed to get a killer deal on a used winch from a friend, but that winch is just, is just big enough. Like, you know, say so you've got a, um, a 1500 series Dodge, or a, um, or one of the JKUs, um, and you've got an 8,000 pound winch on it. Usually that's all you need, but you get it buried up. Uh, you get buried up midway to the doors in the mud. That eight thousand pound winch is probably not going to pull you out, and if it does, it's going to struggle. That's where this comes in. You can do a double line pull back to the vehicle, and now 
Just now you're 8,000 pound I'm in a winch. You've doubled your mechanical advantage by adding a pulley in. Now it can pull more. Which, you know, I'm at, there's a lot more. It's really complicated physics and I mean, things and everything's dynamic. And I mean, it's all situation to situation, but, you know, don't don't just assume because, well, okay, I have an 8,000 pound winch. I put this on it. Now I can pull 16. You know, that is perfect conditions. You're able to pull 16 by putting this in line with 8,000. I mean, and knowing your, but basically it's knowing your winch, knowing what your rating is. Because winches, I mean, your maximum pull rating is generally what's advertised. I have a 12,000 pound winch on my Jeep. It is only able to pull the 12,000 pounds on the first wrap of the uh, cable on the drum. When you go to the second wrap, you're not able to pull that 12,000 pounds. It drops. Because you've made the diameter larger, you're not able to... Uh, you've changed the ratio. You go to your third wrap, it's even less. You've made is further out, bigger diameter, you've changed the ratio. Your last, and that was one of my reasons for going with the 12,000 pound on a two door, is that my, you really want to look at your lowest rating for your winch. Because my lowest rating is just over, I think it was right at 8,000 pounds. And that is the fourth wrap. So the lowest pull rating for that winch is the maximum pull rating for an 8,000 pound winch. So that's things you have to consider. And that's the reason even though I mean, you have an 8,000 pound winch, you may need one of these. Because you're not, because if you're only, if you're only pulling, say you have a hundred foot of line on your winch, and you're pulling 25 of it, you're not able to pull the full 8,000. Amen. So, these would be handy. Another good situation, another situation would be changing the direction of your pull. Say, your friend is stuck and needs help, but you can't get your vehicle directly in front of them. You can take hook this to a tree in front of them, tree, rock, whatever, and then now you can now you can park on the trail, run your line, and then bring it out, and now you can pull your friend out of the mud while you're still up here on the trail. So, good bit. And then, one of the last things that I kind of want to touch on in depth is this thing. If it'll focus, there it goes. Is your um, your winch blanket? Now these are very important safety items because if in the event something goes wrong, this may be the difference between a busted um, a grill and a trip to the ER. Because the idea behind this is if something goes wrong and that line breaks, this here is weighted, it's when it's being held up by the tension, when the tension is gone, gravity should pull it back. Now, you don't have to have a commercially available one like this. These are nice to have. I may end up buying at least one more of these. No. You could technically take your bag, use this as a second winch line dampener. If you have a jacket, no. or you know, just anything that you can put over that winch line to put to put weight on it. And the idea, idea behind that is that if something goes wrong, instead of your line wanting to come, instead of your winch line wanting to come straight back, this will pull, instead of it coming straight back, or 
want, or a lot of them want to go up. This here, it will still come back, but this here will pull it down and back. This will bring, it will still rebound from the break towards the origin, but this will pull it down to the ground. So instead of flying through the air, it should, this should, would hopefully pull it down to where it is I mean, basically just whipping along the ground instead of flying through the air. So, very important safety item. Mm -hmm. If you don't have one of these, then either get one or a carry, I mean, you can use a spare strap, I mean, wrap it around it, I mean, old blankets, I mean, extra, extra jackets. Go look at I mean, my video where I, mean, I went to Wildcat. That's the first time that I actually had to use the winch on the trail. Did not have one. I used my little cooler, my little six can lunch box. I took that and put that over my winch line as a safety damper. Again, you don't have to have the commercial ones. You can use anything that you want that you have handy. Just make sure you put a damper on that winch line. Or if you're towing, pulling somebody out. Especially in, like, I mean, now towing, you know, just along the trail, not quite as dangerous because you're not, you know, presumably you're not got a, the vehicle stuck that you're trying to recover. You're just dragging them along with you. Still a good idea to put one on for safety. But anytime you're doing like a snatch recovery or, you know, maybe you don't have kinetic ropes and straps. So you can't really, you know, do that whole running jerk. But, you know, put the, I'm gonna put the rope on, on the stuck vehicle. You put the other end of the strap on the recovering vehicle. And then, you know, you take the slack out and then go to pull. Put one of these on. If you have two of them, put one on each end. If you have one, usually put it in the middle. So, uh, which actually, this one on the back of it, let me get closer so that you can get a view of this. It actually has instructions and shows you where to put it. And this one actually says to put it in the middle of your line. And it has all kinds of safety warnings and stuff of that nature and good information. So, now, my thoughts and ideas on this. And I'm gonna, I know I got rambly and long winded, but I just wanted to share, you know, some, I'm gonna, some. Uh, information about you know what these bits of kit are I mean you know some things are self-explanatory like your tree trunk protector you know you don't want to wrap a winch line around something and hook it to itself because uh, one if you're using a synthetic line you have that abrasion and uh, that can weaken or break your line if you're using steel cable like I have actually hooking it to itself and then putting it under load can kink and break the line so you know some like I said some things are pretty self-explanatory you know tree trunk and plus you know and you'll find this on you know any you know how to winch and how to set up winching videos and things like that which I will do one later I mean this also protects the tree you know like like the name says tree trunk protector it keeps you from killing the tree but I mean you know, things like these shackles, they're pretty self-explanatory. Um, one quick tip. Well, actually, two tips. I mean, when you go to use these, t tighten them up, and then a quarter to half turn back, 
and you're I know it doesn't really make sense to me either but the idea is, is that if you tighten this all the weights and then you put it under load this is going to tighten this can possibly tighten up to where you're not you know you're going to have a really hard time to get it loose so if you do that quarter and a half turn because it's not this here being in there tight that, that does the work it's the pulling shear force this pin just has to be in there and secure but that allows it to move a little bit without you know, binding and then you'll be able to get these back off and the other thing is that if you plan on doing like I do and if you watch my either one of my bumper videos I show it to you I know for sure I do in my front one front bumper I'm going to install and review video this little hole run your wire through it it don't have to be nothing big and heavy just you know run your wire through and wire your pin onto your d-ring if you're going to run these on the street and the reason being is that yeah you could bring these up you could tighten them down there's always the possibility that you know they vibrate and rattle and over time that pin backs out backs out backs out and then over time once it backs out far enough your pin falls out that falls down well now not only have you lost a d-ring you've potentially injured somebody so it's it's a huge safety concern if you're going to run these on the street wire the pin to the shackle um, of course you know gloves you know good set of leather gloves I'm um, I would say it's probably more important with steel cable winches than it is with synthetic line winches but at the same time with synthetic lines you still run the risk of rope burns and things like that now there's you know there's always the question of you know do you want a you know snug fitting glove that's not going to get caught in anything or do you want a loose fitting glove that if it does get caught in something it's going to grab the glove and you're able to jerk your hand out so leave your thoughts in the comment section on you know which makes more sense to you a good snug fitting pair of gloves which honestly these are you know they, these are fairly snug fitting but I mean, at the same time you know I could get my hand out fairly quick if they was to catch on something I mean, so all in all, this seems to be a really good quality kit. Price wise, you know, if you was to go through and it's like I said earlier, if you go through and price out all the components individually, you'll probably end up spending right at the same amount of money for the I mean, all the components individually as you would just going ahead and buying the kit. The question is, is you know, do you want to spend the 130 now and have everything together or you know is it more feasible for you to you know buy you know buy a piece here buy a piece there and there's always customizability you know add things to it if you see that if you've carried this in the back of your vehicle you've done 50 recoveries and you've never used this piece of kit you might go well I don't really need that Oh, I just use this thing instead so you can just take that out that weight not being carried around every bit of weight that you're not carrying around is I mean, is less wear and tear on the vehicle as in like this you know less sprung weight a little better fuel economy so just things to consider so before I get too too much more off on a tangent and start rambling again this has been my review of the rugged rig ridge I mean, recovery kit if you enjoyed this and want to see more of my stuff feel free to I mean, subscribe and I always appreciate it when I get feedback let let me know that you like
the video. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you next time.